Joining us this week, Charles Sennett. He is the executive editor and vice president of Global Post. And Dagmar Olland. She is the deputy international editor of The Wall Street Journal. Welcome to the two of you. Hi. Thank you. All right, let's start with um, Afghanistan. A lot of American money, a mm -hmm. lot of mm -hmm. American lives was invested mm -hmm. in making this election possible. Very low turnout. And then you have the President Hamid Karzai who claims it was a great success. Charlie, was this really a success? Are we to blame? Um, it? it wasn't a success, but it didn't go as bad as many had feared it might. I think that in the end of the day, this election had two things happening. It was a political contest, and we all sort of know where this ends. It's going to end with Karzai being reelected if, if all the collective wisdom is accurate. But, but it's also a contest in which we're really testing the Obama administration's new counterinsurgency policy. You know, they said they would, they would increase the troops by 21,000. We're in the middle of that. We're in the middle of the offensive. They say they want to bring security so that we can see this nascent democracy really take root. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't succeed in that. And well, it certainly raises a, questions. Isn't there a deal here, supposedly? We tell the Afghan people, we'll try to make it as secure as possible. But your obligation is to come out and vote. Right. Well, I think one thing that we brought out in, in our articles is how, in some ways, the Taliban has had some success, and they've turned the focus of this election to, you know, it's violence versus votes. So it's not so much who's going to win, it's is it going to work. And so in that sense, uh, they have had some success, and they definitely, um, it seems like the voter turnout has been small partly because of this uh, disruption and, and bombing. How do we know that it's fear that kept people from voting? Maybe they just didn't like the system or the candidates' mm. offer. No, I think, I think the evidence that it was fear was there on the ground. From what we heard from our uh -huh. correspondents, um, you know, Global Post has an excellent correspondent in Kabul who really very uniquely gets to travel the whole country, and that's Jean McKenzie. And what she was pointing out to us is that in the South, voter turnout was very low, because in the South and the East, the Taliban has great control. That's where they've really got the Pashtun belt and that's where they hold the most sway. Their voter turnout was low, particularly among women who, who, were, who really did not come to the polls. Whereas in the north, where you have a more Tajik ethnic background, the Taliban has less sway, uh, there were, the polls were packed. And this is sort of, you know, to the extent we need to watch this race, and I don't know that we do, because as I say, I think Karzai wins it, but it does favor Abdullah. This is the former foreign minister, Abdullah Abdullah, who will benefit from this low voter turnout in the South. But what does this low voter turnout predict as far as the future in this country and how we are going to get out of this war? Right. Well, I think, as you were mentioning, um, you know, there is some fatigue in places like Iraq with our, you know, long engagement, the U.S., our allies. And I think this election is important because um, I don't think I mean, some people are saying maybe the window is not so large for getting this on track. So I think this election is a very important uh, point for that. Well, you mentioned Iraq, and I want to turn to that now because we had that horrible spate of bombings that took place mm -hmm. in Baghdad where you yeah. had hundreds of people who were killed and wounded. And again, I don't want to keep beating this into the ground, but another place where uh, we have yeah. lost a lot of American yeah. lives and spent a great deal sure. of American money, and it seems to be coming sure. unglued. They're connected, I think. I mean. The, the, the reason we are so far behind in what the U.S. and the international partners hope to achieve in Afghanistan is because the U.S. turned its focus to Iraq. I think that's widely perceived, even within the military leadership, as a mistake. It was a mistake to take our eye off Afghanistan. It, it hurt us in Afghanistan. But in Iraq, we had the successes of the surge, which were being trumpeted. And General Petraeus, I believe, did have success. I do think the surge really did help secure Baghdad in an, and in important ways. And now as we shift our focus to Afghanistan, we're watching a slide back in Iraq. And they are connected. We're an overstretched military at this point. Um, I don't understand why the drawdown isn't happening uh, on, a, on a greater speed in Iraq. But I also think this bombing, it's really important to reflect on the anniversary of the, this bombing fell very close to the anniversary of six years ago in the UN, UN bombing. Mm -hmm. And if you look back to six years ago in Iraq, it's extraordinary how far along the country has come. And I also feel I was there for covering that bombing. Those were the dark, dark days of, of Iraq's history. And now things are better. But how do we know we're not going back to those days? I don't 
think you can say. And there are some points coming up uh, as the U.S. draws down. Um, for instance, the uh, elections in January, parliamentary elections. I think that's a point a lot of people will watch yeah. to see about, yeah. you know, yeah. possible violence. Well, I want to turn, before we run out of time, to Lockerbie and the release of Abdel Basit Ali al Megrahi. Uh, the Scottish uh, leadership there decided it was okay to pardon him because mm -hmm. of his medical condition. That great Scottish name, Megrahi. Megrahi. <laughs> um, what about this decision to let him go? Yeah, this, this was deeply disturbing video. When you watched um, You're Libyans, talking about what, the return to Tripoli? The return to Tripoli, when you watched those people there on the tarmac celebrating and waving Scottish flags, I mean, that's hard for an American audience in particular to handle. Um, and I do think it is disturbing, but I also think there is something that reveals itself in, in this release, and that is a different understanding of, of um, crime and punishment for terrorism in Europe than there is in America. In America, um, this, is, this is relatively new to us uh, compared to, for example, Britain, which had a 30-year struggle with the IRA, of course, or Spain, you know, which had this long struggle with ETA. France with the Algerians. But it was a, it but was they, a hundred, you know, it was over a hundred Americans, 150, I think it was. The but the killed. release says something about Europe just looks at terrorism and prosecution in it, I think, in a very different context. You've spent more time yeah, in Europe. I wonder I mean, if you agree. I think it's not just terrorism. I think it's, you know, in other criminal cases like murder, mm -hmm. you will sometimes mm -hmm. see a much shorter sentence than you would in the U.S. But even they must be taken aback well, by the yes, response and, of um, the celebration. And what I think this also shows is uh, Scotland, which uh, about 10 years ago got the right to make independent decisions on some things like this, justice. Which they really play up now. Right. So here's their big moment on the world stage. <laughs> right, right. And they're getting a lot of criticism. And, yeah. um, you know, and especially the way the news kind of leaked out, they're getting criticism right. for the handling of it in general. So We've got to end it there. Dagmar Allen, Charles Sennett. Thank you both very thank much. Thank you. Thanks.